It's music theory online. Let's learn some theory online by watching modules online with music theory online. Hi everyone and welcome to module 9. So far we've been talking about intervals and triads. Do you remember when I said a triad is a chord with only three notes? Now we're going to move on to other chords. These four note chords are really triads with one of the notes of the triad being doubled. Today we'll be looking at chords in keyboard style. Keyboard style is when one note is placed in the bass clef and the other three notes are played in the treble clef. This fits really nicely on the piano or keyboard. This means that we have a fourth note which is played in the bass clef. The note that's written in the bass clef determines the inversion of the chord. Whatever the notes are above the bass clef doesn't affect the inversion. Only the bass note determines the inversion of the chord. As I said earlier, these four note chords are simply triads with one of the notes doubled. Normally you want to double the strongest note of the triad, which is the root in root position and first inversion. In second inversion chords, the bass should be doubled. Just like triads, in these examples we can name the chords by the letter name and by the quality. Here we have F major, B flat major, C major, and F major chords. All of these chords are found in the key of F major, which is the key of this whole example. In addition to using the letter name and quality to name chords, we can also give them Roman numerals. Roman numerals are always used to identify chords, with major chords being identified with capital Roman numerals, and minor chords being identified with lowercase Roman numerals. We find the Roman numerals by determining the root of the chord, then counting from the tonic of that key. In our first example, the root of the chord is F. Because we know we're in the key of F major, the F major chord is a one chord. In the second example, we have a B flat major chord. The root is B flat, which is the fourth degree of the F major scale. That means this is a four chord. Our third example is a C major chord. The root of the C major chord, C, is found on the fifth degree of the F major scale. That means this C major chord is a five chord in F major. Of course, the last one is a one chord in F major. Here's what these chords sound like. Here's another example of root position chords. The important thing to remember is that in keyboard style, the note in the bass determines whether or not the chord is in root position, first inversion, or second inversion. The first two examples are the same. They're both an F major chord in root position because the root of the F major chord is F. Notice as well that the F is doubled, which follows the doubling rule. Because we're in the key of F major, these first two chords can also be called one chords. Here we have a B flat major chord. This is also in root position because B flat is in the bass. In F major, this could also be called a four chord. We have another F major chord here. Notice that it's the same as the first two chords and like the first two chords, could also be called a one chord. Can you identify this chord? It's a D minor chord which is a six chord in F major. It's also in root position because we have a D in the bass. It follows the doubling rule because the D is doubled in the treble clef. Our next chord is a G major chord in root position. You would not find this chord in the key of F major. Notice how the B has been raised to B natural. If the B had been left as a flat, this would be a G minor chord. The last chord is a C major chord, which is also a five chord in F major. Here's what this progression sounds like. Music 
you see how when we have a number of chords, it makes a really nice chord progression. When you start working on chord progressions, theory becomes so interesting because of the awesome sounds that you'll be able to write using chords. Let's just go over what we've covered in this module. When you're writing in keyboard style, always begin with the bass note. The bass note will give you the inversion. There are two ways of naming the chords. You can name them with the letter name and quality or by the Roman numeral. Uppercase Roman numerals are used for major keys and lowercase Roman numerals are used for minor keys. After you have your bass note written, then you can add the three notes in the treble clef. It's very important to remember the doubling rules. Double the root in root position and first inversion chords and double the bass in second inversion chords. Try to keep the notes in the treble clef close together within an octave. In order to change the position of the chord from root position to first inversion or second inversion, you must change the bass note because the bass note determines the position of the chord. The stem direction follows the third line rule. If the notes of the treble clef are below the middle line, the stems will go up. Above the middle line, the stems will go down. The note that's furthest away will determine the direction of the stems for all the notes. In this module, we've taken triads and made them into four note chords. If you're comfortable with what we've covered in triads, then moving to chords is a very small step. Completing your assignments and sending them to me will help you become more comfortable with writing chords. I think the two most important things to remember in this module are identifying the inversion of the chord and doubling the correct note. Remember, I'm here to help you every step of the way. I hope you attend Theory Club this week so we can go over chords and any questions you have. If you have any questions in the meantime, please let me know. I hope you have a super duper week. Bye now. It's Music Theory Online. Let's learn some theory online by watching modules online with Music Theory online.